praise him. Let's continue praising the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's glorify his name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory belongs to you, Lord. Honor belongs to you, Lord. We lift you up in this place, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We give you glory, hallelujah. We lift your holy name up, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Great is our God. Amen. Our God is great. Amen. Our God is what? How many of you believe that? Come on, if you believe that, say our God is great. Is your God great? Is he great? Hallelujah. Is he great? He is great. Praise the Lord. He is great. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Our God is great and he's greatly to be praised. He is greatly to be what? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, the worship that we give to God, the praise that we offer to God does not uh, measure to his greatness. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Angels worship him day and night. The oceans worship him day and night. The birds worship him day and night. Every created thing glorifies his name. Yet all that worship does not meet, hallelujah, the measure of his greatness. God is too great, hallelujah. God is, and that is the God that we're worshiping, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That is the God that we are worshiping that is, in, that is in our midst today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. He's in our midst. Praise God. We worship him. How lucky we are. How privileged we are. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. We are privileged, truly speaking, truly from the bottom of my heart. We are privileged to speak, to, 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 to worship this great God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is great. In every situation in our life, he's still great. Praise God. Hallelujah. Whatever, whatever happens in our life, he's still great. Praise God. Hallelujah. He is great. That is the great God that we're serving. Amen. Amen. And we are privileged to be in his presence. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that? Amen. We are privileged. We are privileged. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. He is good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Our God is truly great. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is truly great. Praise the Lord. Amen. Those of us who understand that, praise the Lord. We can't just, we can't stop worshiping him, glorifying his name, praising him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Seeing the greatness of his majesty and glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. The Bible says the angels, the cherubims, they, they stood before him day and night and they covered the eyes with their wings and they say holy holy is the Lord God Almighty the whole earth is full of his glory hallelujah praise the Lord hallelujah sometimes the enemy blinds us to the glory of God so we don't worship him praise God 
Hallelujah. But we have to open our eyes and see him high and lifted up. Praise God. And worship the king. Hallelujah. And give him honor and praise that he deserves. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. He is great. Our God is great. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. While we're standing in this spirit, let's open our Bibles to the book of Jeremiah 9.23. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Amen. Jeremiah 9, from verse 23. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, let not the mighty man glory in his might, nor let the rich man glory in his riches, but let him glory, let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in this I delight, says the Lord. Hallelujah. And not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Not the mighty man glory in his might. Not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him glory in this. That he understands and knows me. That I am the Lord. Exercising loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. Hallelujah. Lord we worship you Lord. We magnify your holy name Lord Jesus. Today, Lord Jesus, as we open our hearts, Lord, to your word, Lord Jesus, speak to our hearts today, Lord Jesus. Instruct us, teach us, direct us, O oh Lord God, Lord Jesus. Lord, mighty God, Lord Jesus, we are here at your footstool, Lord Jesus. Teach us your word, hallelujah. Show us your way, Lord Jesus, and your paths, Lord Jesus. We have opened our hearts and our minds unto you, Lord. Touch us by your spirit. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. May the Lord Jesus bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Today I want to talk to you on the subject of the light of the knowledge of God. Amen. The light of the knowledge of God. Here the Lord says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Glory means boast. Praise God. Amen. Whoever is wise, don't, don't boast about your wisdom. Yes. Whoever is mighty, don't boast about your strength. Mighty. Whoever is rich, let him not boast about his riches. But let him who glories or boasts, boast in this, praise God, that he understands and knows me. Amen. Hallelujah. God has given us the right to boast when we know and understand him. Praise God. Boasting in the knowledge of God. Boasting in understanding God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many of you are glad here today that you understand and know him? Because there are many people who worship God without knowing and understanding him. Praise God. Hallelujah. But we are privileged by the mercy and grace of God to understand and know the one whom we worship. Paul said, I know whom I have believed. Praise God. We know whom we have believed. Praise God. Hallelujah. We know him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has given us an understanding Amen. that we may know him. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so the Lord says here, whoever wants to glory, let him glory in this fact that he understands and knows me. And then he says that I am the Lord exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth for this for in this I delight. Now, why does the Lord uh, allow people to glory in this 
uh, knowledge, in the knowledge of who he is. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. When you notice the next verse after that, it says that I am the Lord. And then it says, exercising loving kindness, judgment, righteousness in the earth. Yes. Yes. What he's really saying is that loving kindness, judgment, righteousness, which he delights in, is rooted in the knowledge of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. In other words, Loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness is an outgrowth of the knowledge of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. When God imparts his knowledge in an individual's heart, through that knowledge, God will begin, hallelujah, amen, amen. amen. together with that person to exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. In other words, the knowledge of God in the heart of man will produce things that are delightful in the eyes of God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. A person's riches is not going to make him loving, kind, loving person. A person's wisdom is not going to make him perfect in judgment. Praise the Lord. A, per, a person's hallelujah, might is not going to bring make him a righteous person. Praise the Lord. But what will make a person loving, righteous, hallelujah, Amen. and just in judgment is Having the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Having what? The knowledge of God. In fact, the knowledge of God, it all, all righteousness, all holiness, all godliness, praise God, is rooted and sourced and begins in the knowledge of God. Someone cannot be righteous, someone cannot be holy, someone cannot be godly while being ignorant of God. It is impossible. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me go to Second Corinthians chapter four. Second Corinthians chapter four. Hallelujah. Amen. Chapter four from verse five. Hallelujah. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your born servants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice there Paul says, we do not preach ourselves, but who do we preach? Christ Jesus, hallelujah. And then in verse 6 it says, For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our heart to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. In other words, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Praise God. The light that dissipates darkness is the light of the knowledge of God. Praise the Lord. The knowledge of God is light. Amen. It is. Amen. It is. It's light. Amen. Hallelujah. It's light. Amen. Now, notice here darkness is the absence of what? Of light. That's what darkness is. It's basically absence light. of light. Praise the Lord. In this scripture, light is described, the light that shines out of darkness is described as the knowledge Hallelujah. of God. The knowledge of who God is. The knowledge of who Jesus is. Praise God. The knowledge, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That revolves around the identity of God. Praise the Lord. 
His nature, his character, praise the Lord. That is the light. So, darkness is the absence of the knowledge of God. In other words, darkness is ignorance of God. Darkness is what? Ignorance of God. In the same way light, when it enters a person's heart, his works will begin to be the works of what? Light. What is that light? That light is what? The knowledge. That's why God says rejoice, glory in what? In understanding and knowing me. Because that light, that knowledge is going to bring about what? The character, the works of light. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. In the same way, darkness is an absence of the knowledge of God. Is being ignorant of God. And therefore those who are ignorant of God. Their works is the works of darkness. It's sin. Unrighteousness. Wickedness. Praise the Lord. Both of. The, one is sourced out of what? Ignorance of God. And the other one is what? Knowledge of God. In fact, Paul makes it even much, much more clearer in the book of 1 Corinthians 15.34. 1 Corinthians 15.34. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15.34. Awake to righteousness and do not sin, for some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Now notice, notice what he's saying. He says, awake to righteousness and sin not. In other words, awake to light, praise God. Awake to the works of light, praise God. And depart from the works of darkness. Hallelujah. How so? What is the reason? For some do not have the knowledge of God. Because people, there are some people among you who do not have the knowledge of God, who are ignorant of God, they are reflecting the works of darkness, praise the Lord. Because they are in darkness, praise the Lord. Ignorance of God is darkness. So true. Sin, it all begins, sin is rooted in the ignorance of God. That is why, you know, when we think of sin, we think of, oh, there's all kinds of sins, right? All kinds of unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says when the Lord Jesus comes down to judge the world, praise the Lord. Amen. He will judge two groups of people. Amen. He puts it this way. Um, hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, no, Second Thessalonians, I believe it's Second Thessalonians. Hallelujah. Chapter 1, verse 7. Let's read from verse 6. Since it is righteous thing with God to repair with tribulation those who trouble you, to give to you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven and with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. This shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in the day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among those who believe because our testimony among you was Believe. Now notice there it says, when the Lord returns, hallelujah, with his mighty angels in flaming fire, he's taking vengeance on those who do not know God and those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Why is that? It's just these two groups of people. Those who do not know God. There are all kinds of sin. There are all kinds of immorality in the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. What does it say? The Lord comes back. He's going to judge what these people, these sinners, uh, adulterers, fornicators, all this. He just mentions just one thing. Do not know God. Why? Because all sin is rooted in ignorance of God. 
So anyone who is immoral, anyone who is sinful, praise God, Amen. he's ignorant of God. So true. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. And so this is how powerful the knowledge of God is the light. It's the light. It's basically light. That's it. Yes, it is. That is why God says, let him glory in this. Because it is through that light that man's work becomes the fruits of light. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And so when you look at in the book of John 15, verse 20, 21, John 15, verse 20, 21, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Remember the word that I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. Amen. What is there? Amen. These are their works. They are going to do all these evil things. And because it is because of one thing, praise the Lord. Just one thing. And that one thing is they are ignorant of God. They don't know God. So they are in darkness. In fact, when you read in John 16, verse 1 to 3, these things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogue. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God a service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. Again, Jesus Christ is rooting their works back to where? Because darkness, hallelujah, is ignorance of God. Hallelujah. And therefore, the works of darkness is the works of ignorance. Lack of the knowledge of God. Praise the Lord Jesus. You know, the things that we used to do, the sinful things that we used to do, when we were ignorant of God, it's because we were ignorant of God that we were doing those things. Exactly. Paul persecuted the church. Why? Because when he saw the light, the first thing that he asked was, Who are you, Lord? Oh, he persecuted the church. He believed he was doing God a service. He believed that he was doing righteousness. But what he was doing was, he was doing the works of darkness because he was ignorant of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so Paul in fact says in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12 to 15 that we can all relate to, praise God. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me because he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief, praise the Lord. We have obtained mercy because those things that we did, well, we, we did it out of ignorance, praise God. When we were living our life in ignorance of God, we were serving diverse lusts, hallelujah, and pleasures. We were children of wrath, praise God. We were working all kinds of unrighteousness, praise the Lord. All these things was rooted in our ignorance of God, hallelujah. But when the revelation of Jesus came, Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. There is no way, let me tell you something. There is no way that God could be revealed to you. You could have this revelation, this truth, praise God, and remain in unrighteousness, in wickedness and sin. Yes, yes. Amen, amen, yes. amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God revealed himself to Moses. Mm -hmm. And Moses went to Pharaoh. And the people of Israel says, the God of the Hebrews has been revealed to me. We can't stay here, praise God. Hallelujah. That revelation is what brought them out of Egypt. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen. 
people who have the revelation and this revelation has to be revealed to you by God praise the Lord and we're going to look at that later but let me tell you something praise God you can dwell in the house of God and not know him praise God amen amen Hallelujah. Let's go. Let's come to the house of God now. Praise the Lord. Amen. First of all, let's thank the Lord that God opened our eyes. Praise the Lord. Amen. To come this revelation and this truth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. It's by his mercy. Hallelujah. And everyone that is will, that is that is working the works of unrighteousness because of their ignorance. Hallelujah. There is mercy. There is mercy, hallelujah. If they are willing to, 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 to forgo their ignorance, hallelujah, to let go of their ignorance, praise God, and embrace, hallelujah, the knowledge of God, praise the Lord, there is mercy. Amen. Praise the Lord. There is mercy. But let me tell you something, praise God. When you dwell in the house of God, amen, and you don't have the revelation of God, praise the Lord. You know, a person who knows God, his works will reflect it. Amen. The Bible says in the book of First Peter, um, book of Titus, uh, hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Everybody say amen. Amen, amen. amen hallelujah. Glory. Titus chapter, hallelujah, chapter 1. Verse 15, to the pure all things are pure, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving nothing is pure, but even their mind and conscience are defiled. They profess to know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, disqualified for every good works. They profess to know God, but in works what? They deny him. In other words, again, remember, knowledge of God is what? Light. When a person has the knowledge of God, his life will reflect it. His life will what? Will, re will reflect it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A person does not know God because he says he knows God. Because he can quote scriptures. Mm -hmm. Paul could quote scripture from Genesis to Revelation. Praise God. Yes. He knew the law. He knew, hallelujah, Amen. all the precepts and the commandments, praise God. Hallelujah. If you heard him preach, if you heard him speak, you might believe that he knows God. But let me tell you something, he was ignorant of God. And as a result, he was driven to persecute God himself. Hallelujah. Amen. So you have to understand the knowledge of God will be reflected in someone's works. Amen. Hallelujah. That is why God says, let him who glory, let him glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises loving kindness, judgment, praise God, and righteousness in the earth. These things are an outgrowth or the fruit of knowing me, praise God. And that is why, for example, you know, in John, Paul, in John, if I could find that scripture, John says, if any man says that he knows God, but hates his brother, yes. he's a liar and the truth is not in him. Exactly. Praise God. Oh. Hallelujah. And so I want you to understand that, praise God. Amen. That revelation, that truth, that knowledge, praise God. Hallelujah. 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 It's amazing. It has power to change Hallelujah. And transform our lives, praise God. The transforming power of the Spirit of God, praise the Lord, is rooted in the knowledge, hallelujah, of God. Amen. It all begins with knowledge of God. Hallelujah. hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And that is why I tell people, especially in the church, you've got to ask God to give you revelation. He has to be revealed to you. It has to be, in, you know, once God reveals himself to you, it cannot be taken away. Praise God. Amen. 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 Never. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But let's continue, and I'm going to, hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord Jesus. In Hosea 6 verse 6, Hosea chapter 6 verse 6, the Lord says, For I desire mercy and no sacrifice, the knowledge of God more than burnt offering. Praise God. The mercy of God and, and the knowledge of God are connected. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. The knowledge of God brings mercy into our lives. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Interestingly, when you look at uh, 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 in the book of Acts chapter 17, now I have read this scripture many times and I have preached on this scripture many times, but the Lord gave me a different light to it. In Acts chapter 17, Paul goes to Athens. And I'm going to read this in King James Version, Acts chapter 17, verse 16. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was teared up. His spirit was teared up when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. The Bible says as Paul was waiting in Athens, his spirit was troubled, was distressed because he saw the whole city given to idolatry. The Bible says it was wholly given to to idolatry. What was the cause or the root of the city being wholly given to an idolatry, to idolatry? Because they were worshiping ignorance of God. Paul says, when I went about the city, I saw an altar to the unknown God. This city was a city that was worshiping Hallelujah. The ignorance of God. Do you understand that? Hallelujah. The ignorance of God was elevated. They had an altar to it. And so as a result of that worship, the whole city was in gross darkness and it was fully given to idolatry. And that is what we're seeing today. The sinfulness of this world, our society, praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. What, 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 what is the root of it all, praise God? Because ignorance, hallelujah, is worshipped. Ignorance of God is worship. People who are ignorant of God, praise the Lord. People who do not even believe in God, who say God does not exist, are elevated and worshipped in society, praise God. As a result of that, the whole land, the whole world is in deep, deep darkness. It's in deep darkness. Deep darkness. Hallelujah. That is why God said, when I come, I'm going to judge what? Those who do not know? God. Yes. Not only is, is, is it allowed, but it's worshipped. Yes. It's worshipped. Yes. Encouraged, Amen. elevated. Amen. And we know that from any generation, from the past, this time, this generation, the generation of ignorance. Yes. Yes. You know, 100, 200 years ago, the debate was which God is the true God. Mm -hmm. Pray. Mm -hmm. Those who say there's no God was in a minority. Mm -hmm. Now the debate is, is there even a God? Yeah. Yeah. Where is it? Hallelujah. Amen. But let me tell you something. The solution is what? Is the knowledge of God. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. The solution is what? Is the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. That's why Paul said in Acts 17, 13, he, he, he was a doctor, praise God. He told them the root of the problem. And then he says, now he, he, he could have told them to repent of their idolatry. He could have told them to repent of their uh, all kinds of sin that he saw. But he told them, Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Amen. To repent of what? 
their ignorance of God. Because once they repent of their ignorance of God and they have the revelation of God, all that sin and idolatry, praise God, will be gone. It will be fixed, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. When somebody knows God, hallelujah, when somebody uh, has a revelation of God, he's going to throw away the cigar. He's going to throw away the alcohol, praise God. He's going to th th throw away all kinds, of, all kinds of idolatry, praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Why? Because the revelation of God is light. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now, amen. Amen. Let me give you another scripture in Romans 1, 28 to 30, 32. This is for our knowledge to understand. I know sometimes God will reveal to you to understand your spiritual environment. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. In Romans chapter 1, verse 28, it says, Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Notice there what it says. They did not like to retain God. Two things. Did not like and retain God in their knowledge. They had knowledge, but God was not in that. They were completely ignorant of God. And they did not want to have any knowledge to do with God. They were ignorant, completely ignorant of God. And says that the, the result is God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Amen. In a society today, you go to, you know, you look at uh, many statistics and you, you start to see people are struggling with mental illness like never before. Yes. Amen. Like never before. Everyone. And all of it will be solved by what? Knowing God. That's all. That is the solution. And they try to fix it without what? God. It won't work. It get worse and worse. And then it says there, to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness. You see that? Now, unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same but also approve of those who practice them. You see that? The unrighteousness, the sexual immorality, the wickedness, the covetousness, the maliciousness, full of envy, all these things, what, where is it rooted in? Ignorance. ignorance of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So when, one's, when one has, when one is ignorant of God, his whole life will be in darkness, his works will be the works of darkness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. When one has the knowledge of God. Amen. Now the knowledge of God we have to understand is progressive. Yes. Amen. Yes. Right? Yes. From not believing God, you believe there is a God. Yes. That is a light in, its, in itself. Yes. Praise God. Yes. When someone believes there is a God, he's careful what he does because he knows that there's someone watching him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then from believing there is a God, you come, which God is the right God? And you come to the, the knowledge of God, of the Bible is the one true God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then once you come there, you start to have a revelation that God is not three person or two person. You start to have the revelation that God is one. Hallelujah. And there's no one but he. Praise God. And then from there you move forward and you have a revelation that that one God was manifested in heavenly flesh. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He came and died on the cross for us. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Now you know the Father and 
the sun. Praise God. And as this light comes in, your works will reflect it. Praise God. Darkness will dissipate. Hallelujah. And your life will be more and more and more and more full of the works of light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. That is why we have to seek the knowledge of God. That's why we have to pursue the knowledge of God. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. But interestingly, this ignorance of God does not only impact your life, it also impacts your land. It impacts your environment. Yes. It's amazing. Let's go to Hosea chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. Hosea chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. Hosea chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. Oh. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're there, say amen. amen. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. Amen. There is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. God brings a charge against the land, the inhabitants of the land. There is no truth, no mercy, or knowledge of God in the land. And then, verse 2, by swearing and lying, killing, stealing, committing adultery, they break all restraint with bloodshed upon bloodshed. Remember, this is what? The fruit of ignorance of God. Yes, yes. And then look what he says in verse 3. Amen. Their ignorance of God has not only impacted their life, their works has become evil, right? But in 3, it tells us what happens to the land. Therefore, the land will mourn, and everyone who dwells there will waste away. And the beasts of the field and the birds of the air, even the fish of the sea, will be taken away. You know, you hear news, news animals dying, almost on basic, on, 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 on weekly basis. Birds just dropping dead. People going to the beach and finding whales just dead. Lord. Dolphins dead. Lord. Praise God. And people are saying, what is, what is the problem of this? Praise God. The scientists call it climate change. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. But let me tell you what the true problem is. Praise God. It's the ignorance of God. It's the ignorance of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They deduce according to their natural order. Yeah. But God reveals to us the hidden things of the spirit. What's happening in the spiritual world. Yes. Praise God. Yes. And it's because of that. In fact, when I read an article, just you remember last year, there was a big, big bushfire in Australia. Over three billion animals were wiped out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a while. The land is suffering. The animals are suffering. The fish of the earth is suffering because people are ignorant of God. Amen. Because God has given dominion over the earth, what? To mankind. So when the mankind is righteous, the earth is righteous. righteous. It's fruitful, praise God. Yes. It's blessed. When the mankind is unrighteous, praise the Lord, the whole earth is cursed. Amen. But let me tell you something. There is hope. Hallelujah. Yes. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes and reigns here for a thousand years in the millennial reign, praise God. You know what's going to happen? Let's read that. Isaiah 11, verse 1 to 9. There shall come forth a road from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Do you know what he's talking about here? He's talking about Christ and he's talking about the second coming. Yes. 
Because he says here in verse 4, he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. And he says, with the breath of his lips, he shall slay the wicked. What does that mean? With the breath of his lips, he shall slay the wicked. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 8, and the lawless or wicked one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth. And destroy with the brightness of his coming. And Isaiah foreseeing this, he says, with the breath of his lips, he shall slay the wicked. He's talking about the second coming. And then look what happens. Verse 5, righteousness shall be the belt of his loins and faithfulness the belt of his waist. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall get graze. The young one shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play by the cobra hole. And the wind child shall put his hand in the viper's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For... Because the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Hallelujah. Lion won't be eating his prey, praise God. He will be eating like an ox. Hallelujah. The child will pray with a cobra. There will be no violence in the earth, praise God. Hallelujah. Between mankind or between animals, praise God. Hallelujah. Why? Because the earth is going to be full of the knowledge of God. There won't be one person that is going to be ignorant of God at that day. Hallelujah. Not one person. Everyone will know who he is. And as a result, the earth will be blessed. The animals will be blessed. Violence will be taken out of the earth. Sin and righteousness will be taken out of the earth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because the knowledge of God, hallelujah, is the light. Oh, thank you, Lord. That is why God says rejoice, glory, in knowing and understanding me. Praise be to the Lord Jesus. How many of you are glad? Don't take it lightly, hallelujah. Don't take lightly the knowledge. Don't take lightly the knowledge of God. Don't take lightly the revelation, hallelujah, of the living God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everything is rooted in, in the knowledge of God. We must not be ignorant of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. You know, the grace and mercy, you know, it, we have to understand that it is not of us that we have received this revelation. Yes. We have received mercy. Yes. Hallelujah. So true. Hallelujah. We have received mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's by the mercy of God Amen. that we have this knowledge. It's by the mercy of God that we have this knowledge. So we can glory in this knowledge because of the mercy of the living God. It has nothing to do with who we are. Amen. It has to do with who he is. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is by his mercy that we have received this and we are not worthy. Hallelujah. Pray. We are not worthy. We are not worthy. You are not worthy. I'm not worthy. We are not worthy to receive this great revelation, this great knowledge, hallelujah, this great understanding of the living God, praise the Lord Jesus. It is our, listen, we do not rejoice in our riches. We do not rejoice in our wisdom. What makes us rejoice, hallelujah, praise God, is in the knowledge of God, hallelujah. We may not have riches, we may not have might, praise God, but we've got the knowledge of the living God, hallelujah. We've got the understanding of the living of God the living God praise the Lord and that is something that we need to rejoice over hallelujah and that is the only thing that we need to rejoice over praise God hallelujah amen amen we must not be like people who jump and dance and shout because they get a little bit more money praise God 
a little bit of wealth, praise God. A little bit of uh, wisdom, praise God. Hallelujah. But let us jump and dance when God reveals to us, hallelujah, more about himself, hallelujah. Oh, I'm telling you the truth. When I get revelation, hallelujah, more understanding of him, it makes me jump and dance, hallelujah. It bang, it, it's like a, it, there's no joy like somebody who finds gold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's precious. It's precious beyond any measure. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the grace of God is, is given to us through this revelation. Every grace that we receive in the, in the presence of God is given to us through this revelation. In fact, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, it says, Therefore, get up the loins of your mind, be sober, rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace that is, that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And then 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 Paul, uh, Peter says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of, our, and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace be multiplied, what? Amen. To you in the knowledge of God, praise the Lord. When the knowledge of God comes, praise the Lord, it comes packed with grace and peace, praise the Lord. The more knowledge of, the more knowledge of God you have, the more grace is imparted to you. Peace Amen. is imparted to you. It's all rooted in the knowledge of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That is why we've got to pursue. We've got to seek the knowledge of the Lord. And we've got to ask. And you know, there are many things that we pray. I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to sincerely ask this question to yourself, okay? When you pray, when was the last time you prayed, Lord, give me more revelation of who you are? Remember, don't receive unless you ask. God doesn't just come and give it to you. You've got to seek it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The revelation that the Lord gave me, I sought it, praise God. Amen. I still remember the day that I prayed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And ask the Lord, Lord, give me is this, show me the revelation. Help me to understand your truth. And when the Lord revealed it to me, praise God, it was around, the, uh, uh, around 3 to 4 a.m. in the morning. Hallelujah. I woke up early, early uh, when I was in, in high school, I would wake up early in the morning around, maybe I would sleep early and then wake up around two to study. And that day I decided to read more about uh, uh, in the book of John to understand uh, perfectly the revelation of the Son of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I prayed and I said, Lord, please open my eyes. That day, the Lord opened my eyes. Praise God. Amen. And I was jumping and running around. Praise God. Amen. In that room. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you can study and study and study and study and study, read books and books and books and books, and never have the revelation of God. The Bible says that in the last days, praise the Lord, hallelujah, they shall be ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Let me read that scripture for you. First Timothy, amen, amen. Think, I, wanna, I want you to think about that for a second. In Second, second Timothy, um, I believe it's in Second Timothy, yeah, uh, chapter three. But know this that from verse one, in the last days perilous times will come for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the denying its power and from such people turn away 
For this sort of those who creep into households make captive of gullible women loaded down with sins led away by various lusts. And then verse 7, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Always learning, never. able to come. Let me, tell, let me tell you something from my, from my experience, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is no other time than this time that the Bible has been very, very accessible. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And many tools to study it. Mm. Amen. In fact, to understand the original language, the Greek and the Hebrew, you don't really need to know Greek and Hebrew. Mm -hmm. There's so many tools, there's so many, so many uh, helps, praise God. Materials, I mean, it's so rich. Amen. Right? Yes. And so people have more access to the knowledge, the, the scriptures, praise God, more than any, hallelujah, generation before us. But yet, that did not bring them to the knowledge of God. Can you believe that? That is the fulfillment of the scripture. Ever learning, but never able to come the knowledge of the truth. At the end of the day, you've got to get on your knees and sincerely seek God and say, Lord, I know nothing. I need you to open my eyes Amen. and reveal to me your truth. Reveal to me who you are. Amen. Give me revelation, praise the Lord. Amen. Of who you are, praise God. Amen. Help me understand your identity. Amen. Your character, praise God. Amen. And this is something that we as God's people, we've got to pray that as well. Because there's so much that you can know about God. Paul said that I may know him. Hallelujah. And his suffering. And the power of his resurrection, praise God. I want to know him in every way. Hallelujah. In every part of who he is, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have suffered the loss of all things that I may what? Attain the excellence of of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. amen, amen. amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Now, how does a person come out of this ignorance of God, of, of their ignorance of God, amen? amen? How does a person attain to the knowledge of God? And I have touched a little bit there uh, just a few minutes ago, but we're going to, I'm gonna go over it, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. There are uh, basically three things. Amen. Amen. Two of those things belong, belong to God and one of those things belong to man. Yes. There is what, there is something that, there is a role that we have that we are responsible for, praise God. Amen. There's something that we have to do in order for us to attain the knowledge of God, praise the Lord. Amen. And so I'm going to talk about that first. A person must seek and pursue the knowledge of God. God will not impose his light or knowledge on anyone. A person must seek with, all, with, with, with what he has, with, what is, with, 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 with the ability he has, praise God, Amen. to seek to know God, to desire to know God. If a person does not desire or want to know God, it doesn't matter if, if, if the light is hitting him on his head. He won't know it. Amen. The Bible tells us in Hosea 6, 3. Hosea 6, verse 3. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. Let us know, let us the knowledge of the Lord. Hallelujah. His going forth is established as the morning. And then what? He will come to us. Amen. When does he come to us? When we seek and what? Pursue. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and the former rain to the earth. 
in Proverbs 2, Proverbs 2, from verse 3 to 5, it says, Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. You have to seek it. You have to seek it. A person has to, that is a person's responsibility. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That to have to ask questions, praise God. Amen. I really want to know God. Is he real? Praise God. Amen. Who's the God of the Bible? Praise the Lord. Amen. Is God three person or one person? Praise God. Amen. Is Jesus the Father or not? I want to know. Hallelujah. Yes. And you begin to seek and to find, you're going to seek and to search, praise God. And the Lord will meet you, praise God. And give you his light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that is just, that's your part. That's all you have to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And there's no righteousness or all those things. Don't worry about that. You just seek, pursue. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Seek God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, Amen. 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 All right. Now the two things that belong to God. One is God has to uh, opens one's understanding. Amen. And the other thing is God will provide an instrument to reveal his knowledge. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. So let's look at first uh, the, 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 the third point and then we'll look at the second point. I want to do it in that order. Amen. God will provide an instrument. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you have to understand something. God does not send angels to reveal the truth to you. Amen. He sends people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let me give you an example. In Acts 26 verse 15 to 18. So I said, who are you, Lord? This is Paul talking about recounting uh, his encounter with the Lord. With the Lord. He asked, you see, he, he, the first thing he asked was what? Who are you, Lord? All I have done, all this persecution was because I was ignorant of the Lord. Yes. Who are you? You know, he is a man that has grown up learning Deuteronomy 6.4. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is? Turned out, did not know the Lord that he thought he was serving. Mm -hmm. And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, but rise and stand on your feet. For I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen and the things which I will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Praise the Lord. God opened the eyes of Paul, amen, and delivered him from his ignorance and revealed himself to him for what purpose? That he may be a vessel through which other people will be delivered from their ignorance. Brothers and sisters, God has delivered you and me from our ignorance. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And given us his knowledge, praise God. His, uh, the, uh, the understanding of who he is. What was the purpose? That we may be an instrument a vessels, praise God, by which that light, hallelujah, might shine in the hearts of others. God, hallelujah, Amen. he uses people. For example, Cornelius, he was praying and the angel came to him. The angel could have told him yeah. the revelation. Yes. Have revealed to him who, he, who God was. Yeah. He didn't. No. Told him, call for Peter. Hallelujah. Amen. Call for what? Peter. So when we have knowledge of God, there is a great responsibility. Amen. 
great responsibility. Whatever knowledge we may have, amen, we've got to impart it for people who are in living in ignorance. And that is why Paul said in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 12, let's go there. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 12. Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, a door was opened to me by the Lord. I had no rest in my spirit because I did not find Titus my brother, but taking my leave of them, I departed for Macedonia. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses. Now notice there, through us. Everybody say through us. Diffuses the fragments of his knowledge in every place. Through who? Come on, say with me. Through us, he diffuses what? The fragments of his knowledge. In other words, we are the, what do you call a, a, a bottle that carries a fragrance? We are the bottle, praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. That is carrying what? The fragrance. And God just moves from place to place. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you understand that? Amen. The knowledge is in where? In that bottle. Amen. And so he says there, For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one we are aroma of death leading to death. To the other we are aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? I like that last sentence. Amen. Who is sufficient for these things? We are no, it's not because we are sufficient that God will entrust this great knowledge, revelation, that brings people to life and that condemns people to death. And place that knowledge in our heart. It is from the Lord. And so Paul said it is through us. We are the vessels. Praise God. Amen. My friend you are the vessel to deliver people. Who want to be delivered from their ignorance in their workplace. Yes. Yes. You are the vessel. You are the vessel. And so, this is a responsibility that God places in our heart. Praise the Lord. Now, notice there, let's go back to the scripture that we, be, we read in 2 Corinthians 4, from verse 6 to 7. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6 to 7. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Notice verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Praise the Lord. First of all, it says, The God who commanded light to shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. God who commanded light to shine out of darkness has, sh has shown his light in our heart for the purpose, for the reason to give this knowledge, hallelujah, amen, to amen. others, hallelujah. Amen, amen. God opened the eyes of Paul, put his light in his heart, praise God, amen. hallelujah. For what purpose? Amen. To be a witness. Amen. To open the eyes of the blind. To deliver them from the power of Satan to the power of God. When people are ignorant of God, let me tell you, people are under the power of Satan. What brings them out of the power of Satan is this truth. Is this revelation. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. That is why God first spoke to Moses and he revealed himself to who he was. I am the God of your father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Praise. I am that I am. Hallelujah. And go tell your people, tell my people, I am. 
has sent me unto you, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And he went there and he spoke to the people of Israel and he made signs of wonders and they believed him, praise God. They, they, they had the revelation, hallelujah. And now the time had come to come out of Egypt. Revelation brings freedom. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Amen. And then Paul, <laughs> he came to speak to Pharaoh and reveal to Pharaoh who God was. And you know what he said? We said, Pharaoh, the Lord has spoken to us. He's revealed himself to us. So he says to you, let my people go that they may serve me. And he said, who is the Lord that I should let his people go? I do not know the Lord. Praise God. Oh, you want to know him, all right? Praise God. Hallelujah. You want to know him? Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know how the devil knows God? Praise God. <laughs> when God beats him, praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. They came to cast out that demon from one house, the sons of Siva. And they say, in the name of Jesus Christ, whom Paul preaches, we cast you out. And he said, Paul, I know. And Jesus, I know. Praise God. Who are you? Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. It, it won't work. If you try to go to Pharaoh face to face Pharaoh without having the revelation, uh-huh. it won't work. Praise God. Amen. Yeah? He'll tell you, who are you? Praise who God. You? I know you don't know him. I, in fact, I have more knowledge of him than you have. Praise Amen. God. Are you trying to cast me out? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. It won't work. Yes. But once you have a revelation. Hallelujah. There is, a, an, there is a, a treasure. He knows you because you know him. Amen. Amen. Huh? He knows you because what? You know him. Praise God. And so he's scared to death. He's scared to death. Hallelujah. He may attack you, but he won't succeed. That's why Paul said this, this, this treasure is in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Can you imagine that God chose the weakest vessel to place this great heavenly treasure? Let me tell you why God chose you. Because you were the weakest of the weakest. Sometimes we ask ourselves, you know, we start to seek our God, say, no, why, why did you choose me? You know, I, I can't see anything in my life that would be of use to you. And, and why, what, th- that is the reason why God chose you. Be- because there's nothing in your life that is of use of to him, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God chose, you know, God chose the weakest earthen vessel mm-hmm. that is so easily breakable, yes. so fragile. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To put his this glorious knowledge that brings light, that brings, that, that delivers people from the power of Satan and amen. translates them into the power of God. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so the enemy will attack and will do all kinds of things because, not of you, because of what you have. Yes, it is. And so it says there, we are hard pressed on every side. You're not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our bodies. Oh. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so the enemy will try to do all kinds of things to try to destroy this vessel because of the treasure that is in it. Yes. And the same way God will protect you. And keep you. Not because of who you are. But because of what you have. Amen. 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 Think about it. I mean if you had a piece of, a piece of very fragile. Very expensive uh, uh, item. And you put it in a very uh, fragile. Like a uh, glass. Glass container. Right. When that glass container begins to wobble. You jump at it. Right. To protect it. Not because of the glass, but because of what? The treasure. Hallelujah. 
And because God has placed a treasure inside of us, praise the Lord, when the enemy attacks, he sends his angels, praise God, protects us, hallelujah, praise the Lord Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord Jesus, and gives us victory because we have this knowledge in our hearts, hallelujah, because of this treasure that is placed within us, hallelujah. Praise him. Keep that treasure. That's why God says, let him glory that he knows and understands me. Amen. He protects you because you know and understand him. Amen. He keeps you because you know and understand him. Praise Amen. He blesses you because you know and understand him. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. 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 And we are the vessels. Yes. We are the vessels. Yes. Amen. Amen. And the devil, God knows that. Amen. The devil knows that. Do we know that? We are the vessels. Whatever knowledge we have, we have to impart it. Praise the Lord. That's why Paul says we are debtors. You know, in Romans chapter 1 verse 14, he says, I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as is in me, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. When we preach, when we tell people about the truth, when we bring them to church, praise God, when we witness to them, we are paying our debts. Amen. You've got to, you, have to, you have to see it that way. Amen. You are paying your debt. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God has sent somebody else and taught you, praise God, Amen. and brought this truth to you. Yes. You've got to pass it along. Amen. You are debtor. Amen. You owe it to them. Amen. 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 And this debt is what drives us to speak to people and tell people the truth. We are debtors, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't concern us whether they respond to it or not. Amen. That is up to them. Our responsibility is released from us once we have uh, told them about the way of truth. Praise God. Amen. Once we have showed them this knowledge that God has placed in our heart. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says praise God. We are fragrance hallelujah of life unto life for some. Those who believe and we are fragrance death unto death. Death. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know what that means? Yes. Those who are living amen. Amen. Praise God. And believe they're going to live eternally. Amen. So we are the fragrance of the knowledge of God from life unto what? Life. life. Amen. And those who are dead, praise God. Amen. They are going to be eternally dead because they have rejected the knowledge of God. For one, we are salvation for the other, we are condemnation. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. But we are a witness. Amen. Amen. Wherever we go with God, let, let the fragrance, hallelujah, be released. Amen. People Amen. gotta smell. Amen. Hallelujah. They, 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 they gotta smell this truth, praise God, Amen. when they're around us, hallelujah. Amen. They've got to smell it, hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Some will like it, some will hate it, praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Some will like it. I like, I like this scent. Hallelujah. The scent of truth. What is it? Where did you get it from? How much did it cost? Yes. Praise God. Amen. Come on. Let me tell you. Praise God. Let's sit down. Let me tell you about this scent. Praise God. And you tell them the way of truth. Praise God. And some people would just. Doesn't matter. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And the other thing is this, that the other thing that God has to do is he has to open one's understanding. So, important. so not only do we have to speak and reveal this truth, we've got to pray that God will open people's understanding. Amen. Because even if you speak the truth, the knowledge, the revelation, praise God, God has to open their eyes for it to be revealed to them. That is why, for example, in the book of Acts 16, verse 14, when Paul 
went to a ladies prayer meeting. Verse 14, now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Tithyra who worshiped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. The Lord opened her heart to hear the things spoken by Paul. Paul was speaking. He was doing his duty. Praise the Lord. Amen. Revealing, dispensing the knowledge of God. Yes. But God had also needed to open her heart for her to receive it. And as a result, she was saved. Her and her household. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God has to open. You know, God opened our heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We must be thankful for that. Amen. We are not worthy, but God, by his own mercy and grace, you open our understanding. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so, hallelujah. Your job, your job is to speak and pray. Lord, open that person's understanding. Open that person's eyes. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Open their eyes. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Because it's, it's, it, it has to. He has to. Uh, it's, 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 it's the only way. I mean, hallelujah. And that is why people can study, can study, can study, can study, can study, can study. Amen. And, and also you teach, 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 teach this and never come to understanding or knowledge of who he is. And you've got to be very careful also in the house of God. You can sit here and here and here and here and here and never understand. Unless God opens your heart. That is what happened to the people of Israel. In the wilderness. God gave revelation to Moses. And Moses brought the revelation to the people. He told them. Right? But they did not reflect. That revelation. They reflected the revelation of Egypt. And so interestingly, they saw many things, but they did not perceive. They heard many things they did not understand. In fact, even Moses said that in Deuteronomy 29 verse 2. Listen to what he says, Deuteronomy 29 verse 2. Now Moses called all Israel and said to them, You have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh, to all his servants, to all his land, the great trials which your eyes have seen, the signs and those great wonders. Yet the Lord has not given you a heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear to this very day. What a sad thing. What a sad thing, praise God. You have seen it. You have heard it. But you have not understood. You have not perceived it. You don't have ears that hear or eyes that see because God hasn't given it to you. May the Lord give us eyes that perceive and ears that hear. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Whenever you hear the word of God, you've got to say, Lord, open my understanding. Amen. Open. I don't want to be, hallelujah, to be in your presence, to hear your words and never understand, Amen. to see things with my eyes and never perceive, praise the Lord. I want to understand, and because when you understand, or when you perceive that word that is spoken to you, what you see will have an impact in your life. Exactly. And so you've got to pray. You've got to pray. I cannot stress this enough. You've got to pray. Every one of you, pray. Don't just hear. Pray. Pray. God, open my understanding. Open my understanding. Open my ears. Praise God. Because it's a very, you know, there's one scripture that bothers me always when I read it. In, 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 um, in the book of Matthew. Jesus said, if I can paraphrase or recall it correctly. Jesus said, uh, You will, be, you will be to me like those who come when the door is locked and closed. And you will say to me, we have eaten in your presence. We have heard you in our streets. Open to us the door. And I will say to you, depart from me. I do not know you. We have eaten in your presence. We have heard your words. You have, we, have, we have heard you in our streets. And therefore, we have a right to enter into 
your kingdom. And the Lord says, depart from me, I don't know you. Praise God. That's why you have to seek God and say, Lord, open my understanding. Open, open my heart, Lord. Let me perceive, let me understand, hallelujah, what I'm hearing, praise God. Because when you understand, hallelujah, your life will be impacted. You will leave the word of God. Hallelujah. You will leave it, praise God. Amen. 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 I'm going to say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. You know, I don't know. Let us pray. I want us to pray. If you want to pray where you are, pray where you are. If you want to come to the altar, pray. Let us, I want to pray twofold prayer, okay? Let's pray first of all, Lord Jesus, help us to uh, re, um, release or dispense our debts. Help us to proclaim your word as we ought to. Whenever you give us opportunity, when you send people in our lives, help us to understand that your purpose is for us to speak to them about the truth. Forgive us if we have lost, if we have wasted opportunity that you have set before us. But help us to speak your word Boldly. That's why Paul prayed. If Paul could pray such a prayer, it's important for us to pray. Praise God. Give us boldness to speak your word as we ought to. Secondly, let us pray. God, open the eyes of people. Open the eyes of the people of Australia. Open the eyes and the understanding of men and those who hear our word. Open their eyes. Let us pray. I want us to pray for them. Let us pray. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we come before you. We pray, Lord. We pray, Lord. We pray, Lord. We pray, Lord. We humble ourselves.